on to this story now. Embattled state arms manufacturer Dinell has appointed Talib Sadiq as the interim group CEO. This follows the resignation of Danny Dutoy after less than two years on the job. Now, over the past few months, Dinell has struggled to pay its workers due to a liquidity crisis. The situation has been worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, for more on this, we're joined in studio by the interim uh, Dinell CEO, Mr. Sadiq. Uh, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us. Before we talk about uh, whether or not workers are going to be paid this month, let's start with what, in your considered view, has destroyed that parastatal. You've been there for quite some time. Sure. Well, good morning to you, Koli, and good morning to your viewers. Uh, it's great for me to be here on behalf of Denel, and our focus is really to bring Denel back into a respectable, quality defense and aerospace producer. If I look back, uh, as you did point out earlier on, is that I used to be part of the executive management at Denel from 20, 2008 to 2012. And at that stage, we had managed to position Denel as a respected uh, defense and aerospace manufacturer, manufacturer globally. And what we had done is we had moved from a design development driven organization into a production, a serial producer of quality products. That was one of the things we had done. We had changed the operating model at the time, moving away from a centralized organization to an, uh, to an umbrella company with standalone divisions. Uh, we had, uh, and with, in addition to that, we had, uh, we had managed our risks around program management. Uh, you know, those were the key contributors to what positioned us as a respected state-owned company yeah. at the time. You're still not answering this question about what destroyed this institution. Sure. Very yeah. briefly. So in terms of what destroyed this institution, I think the point is we moved away uh, from being a producer back to being a design development driven organization. We changed the operating model back to being a centralized operating model. Our program risk management has failed. And then most importantly, recently, we've had the issue of corruption. Uh, we've had the formation of Denel Asia, which we are uh, in the final stages of liquidating. There were also supply chain irregularities. And as a result of these things, uh, we've had good quality people leave the organization. How far is the process of liquidating Denel Asia? Uh, it's now just going through the formalities in Hong Kong. It's a Hong Kong registered company. All of the paperwork has been submitted and we have been granted provisional liquidation. So it's really going through the regulatory process in Hong Kong. Let's come back to the issues at hand. You've not been able to pay workers since the month of May, if I understand it correctly. Is Denel able to meet its obligations at least for the next six months? So let's just uh, look back. We have, we have paid our employees from May onwards to now, but we haven't paid them 100%. 25% of our employees were paid 100%. So the 75%, uh, the rest of the employees, there they've been paid a portion of the salary, a significant portion. We've paid our employees between 60 and 70% of their salaries during that time up to now. But during the lockdown, which has had an impact on us, like we've seen with all companies in South Africa, not only in South Africa, across, across the globe. And our activities hasn't, hasn't been, we haven't been operating at about a 70%. In fact, we've been operating at about 30%. But we still weakened ourselves to allow our employees or to give our employees up to 70% of their packages. During the lockdown, we haven't retrenched anyone. We haven't put anyone on no work, no pay. So we've made every effort to try and see how we can accommodate our employees. It's obviously not great because Denel is a people intensive business and people are our key resource in terms of what we do. So it's not great where we have found ourselves. Very briefly, we are out of time. Is Denel able to meet its financial obligations from now up until perhaps six months? Uh, you know, that's the effort we are putting in. Uh, we, we are confident on the future of Denel. It's important our stakeholders work with us. It's going to be a difficult job ahead. We all need to work together because to damage the image of Denel locally and internationally is not great. So we need to work together to make this back into a respected company. How do you avoid 
a situation where the company goes into business rescue. Some have actually predicted as such. Yeah, we do not believe there is any, uh, I mean, there is a need to look at business rescue. There is a number of initiatives that the board has in place that we are looking at driving together with our shareholder. Uh, and uh, we have plans in place, you know, one is to look at internally in the organization how we can improve our program management performance, which has been the root cause for our recent losses, to look at concluding partnerships in order for us to develop market access in international markets, and also engaging with our Department of Defense, who's been a very key stakeholder in helping us uh, become an expert in design and development. What we now need to do is to drive industrialization and production. Talib Sadiq, thank you very much for making the time to speak to us. He's uh, acting CEO, Group CEO at uh, State-owned or State Arms manufacturer, Dinell.